guys, welcome today to a video that I wanted to release a long time ago but never did. And I know this is going to upset some people but I need to show you these facts. The thing is, you have been lied to and today I want to expose these lies. In my videos, I always tell you how in the last 10 years of my career, I've seen people getting better with their GFR and creatinine levels. As an example, in one of my last videos, I've shared with you the success story of Chris. He went from stage 4 to stage 3. He was able, thanks to some improvements in the way he eats, to get his GFR back to 43 from 25. In a more recent video, I've talked about another one of my subscribers and his name is John. He is 76 years old and he has been dealing with diabetes and chemic problems for 27 years. In his life, he achieved something really remarkable. He was able to remain in stage 3 with a completely stable GFR for 27 years. All thanks to the LPD a low-protein eating plan that his nephrologist set up for him 27 years ago. Now, by showing you these success stories, I don't want you to think that what these people achieved was easy. Following a diet to manage a condition as serious as CKD is not easy, especially when T2D is also involved. Now, on the other hand, what I never tell you about is how difficult it is to convince some of the people I meet to follow a different way of eating and how difficult it is to tell them that what they have been told about how to eat was wrong because they were victims of the lies certain experts are still spreading. Now even worse, some people just cannot be convinced that what they have been told was indeed a lie. These people will never get better at all. And it's all because of a lie. That absolutely disproved this myth. Even in people with advanced stages of chronic kidney disease, eating protein has no harmful effect on your kidneys whatsoever. Protein does not harm your kidneys. And yes, I get that. Nobody likes being restricted in the way they eat. But it's still a thousand times better than being tied to a machine for life. Anyone who needs the big D machine will tell you that. So we have two sides here. One side will tell you to keep eating your steak and don't think about your chemis getting worse. Promise me you'll try it first. Yeah, try his meat, Emily. Mm. Don't mind, your GFR declining over the years, they will tell you. On the other side, there is modern science showing hard facts. Modern science says that the LPD, a way of eating which is low on protein, can save you from a lifetime tied to the Big D machine. So now you may ask, is it really worth it giving up eating steak and following a stricter way of eating? Is there proof that LPD actually works? Despite what some experts on YouTube and other socials will tell you there is solid literature supporting the use of the LPD in those with kidney issues. Literature confirms that a LPD can be a way to greatly slow down or even stop GFR decline in people with CRF. But you don't have to take my word for it. Let's take a look at the work of one of the luminaries of this field, Professor Gang Ji Ko. He is a nephrologist. He's very famous in this field because he published more than 20 papers on some of the most respected journals, including the Journal of American Society of Nephrology. He really believes in the role of the low protein way of eating as a way to improve GFR. One of the papers he published clearly outlined the benefits of the low protein way of eating. Let's take a look at them very briefly. There are eight different benefits of the LPD. First, decrease proteinuria. Proteinuria is not just the most important first sign of problems, it's also a predictor of GFR decline. Second, decrease uremic toxins. Consider that uremic toxins are the cause of most signs associated with late stage of CRF. Third, decrease oxidative stress. That's inflammation which also causes several serious problems. Fourth, decrease metabolic acidosis. 
Fifth, decrease phosphorus, very important for the heart, among other things. Six, decrease insulin resistance in those with T2D. Seven, decrease hypertension and most important, ability to slow the decline of GFR. Again, all these benefits are more than just supported by modern science and we can basically consider them proven. You cannot publish a review of studies if your sources aren't trustworthy enough. And what this means is that basically just by limiting protein intake and stage renal failure or ESRF in short can be delayed very significantly. So now let me ask, if the LPD is proven to work, why aren't more people following LPD to avoid ESRF? The answer is misinformation. Most people just don't know about the LPD. This is not a trendy way of eating. It's not an easy one to follow either. More about the practical aspect in the next part of the video. On the other hand, high protein diets have never been as popular as they are today. With the keto finally fading out of popularity, there are new, maybe even worse, high protein diets that are being toted as panaceas for all kinds of situations. The carnivore is one. This is a way of eating that was made just to infuriate vegans, I believe, because there is no way people can actually think that eating more red meat is good for them or for the environment. The paleo is even worse. Influencers are pushing this one real hard today to try and fill the void left by the keto. But the paleo is maybe even worse than the keto. While the keto is supported by some evidence, at least for certain very specific conditions, the paleo is actually based on the false notion that we need to eat like our ancestors did. And that's remarkably silly, I would say, and not just because the vast majority of foods you put on your table today didn't exist in the ancient times. It's clear that influencers are not be the best people to suggest a diet, but it's even worse when there are pros that can tell people to eat more protein to improve their GFR. Yes, unfortunately, that happens too. Now a very, very low carb or ketogenic diet or even a carnivore diet can improve kidney function. We've seen multiple people go from a stage 3 chronic kidney disease and, and reverse their kidney failure back to a stage 2. We've seen stage 2 go to stage 1. And while relying on a high protein way of eating is very bad for those with skin problems, recent studies are finding out that too much protein may be bad for the general population too. Yes, if you know anyone who is starting or is already following a diet too rich in protein, warn them. A recent review of studies published by a team of researchers led by Professor Gang Jiko found out that Worsening real function may occur in individuals with and perhaps without impaired kidney function. Now, this was published in the Journal of American Society of Nephrology and it kind of shocked me. I've always believed that high protein diet were safe for the general population. Well, it turns out they aren't and we still don't really know why. One explanation according to the authors of the study is that glomerular hyperfiltration caused by high protein may lead to an increase in albuminuria and an initial rise and subsequent decline in GFR. What this means is that the nephrons inside your filtering organs will have a hard time dealing with all the scores and waste produced by the metabolism of protein. We know that. And in the general population, this is usually compensated by the kidneys just working harder. However, as the study pointed out, in the US, so many people have serious skin problems without knowing it. This means that eating protein may be just as bad for them. So it's clear that the LPD works. It protects you from the risk of a lifetime type to a machine, even if you have T2D and I want to be very clear on that. Let's see now how we can implement it. Low protein ways of eating basically fall into categories. One, LPD or low protein way of eating with around 0.6 to 0.8 grams of protein per kilograms of body weight. This is around 40 grams of protein per day. People in the earlier stages or those with diabetes are recommended to follow this one. Okay, the LPD. 
Consider that 40 grams of protein is equivalent to the amount of protein you will get from eating a portion of chicken or meat. But please notice that you are not going to eat much chicken or meat. The reason is that 40 grams of protein is what you want to get in the whole day, not just from a single portion. In any case, following a LPD means that you can actually have a portion of some high protein food, such as meat, eggs, or fish, once in a while. Some people prefer to just go vegetarian or even vegan, and that's perfectly fine too. Just remember that supplementing certain essential nutrients when eating vegan is a must. B12 and D are two examples as you would only get these nutrients from animal-based foods. And guys, if you want to know more about what vitamins are a must, my video up here is for you. Now, the LPD is not excessively hard to follow and it will really give you significant benefits in terms of lowered creatine levels, especially if you are in the earlier stages. Literature says that someone in stage 4 or 5 may want to lower their protein intake even more. This is where the very low protein or VLPD can help. Remember that this is not a diet for those with diabetes or those undergoing RRT. A VLPD means having around 20 grams of protein per day or 0.3 to 0.5 grams of protein per kilo of body weight. Don't worry if these numbers tell you nothing, I'll give you some practical examples in a moment. Notice however that this is a pretty extreme eating plan which requires supplementation with keto analogs. This is important. And while numbers are personalized based on someone's height, weight, having to eat just 20 grams of protein per day means no steak, no eggs, no meat, and no fish. Okay, now we will see how VLPD can be implemented with a practical example. Now, very briefly, this is a sample of what someone on a VLPD will eat in a day. Okay, this is just an example, but looking at this slide, you may understand what the big problem of the VLPD is. It is hard to follow. Switching to a very low protein regimen is not as simple as just cutting out grilled chicken or Friday night steak. But it is completely doable, especially if you consider that the reward may be freedom from the big D machine. Now a question that I always get. Should those with T to D follow a LPD? Having both T to D and Kimi issues, will surely make things more complicated. You see, there are only three macronutrients you may get nourishment from. Protein, carbohydrates, and fats. Someone with T2D may benefit from completely avoiding certain carbohydrates though. And as we have seen, in a reduction in protein intake. This will make things more complicated, but it's not impossible to plan a way of eating that works. Now, I made a full video about how to solve this issue. It's up here if you want to know more. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless.